Welcome back everybody, Mark here, and we're going to go ahead and do lesson 5 of our dice roller, creating the dice roll function. But before we get into the lesson, I really want to uh, just tell you guys how much I hope you guys are enjoying this series. If you do, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, let me know, subscribe. But also, this is the first video with the intro that I've thrown together, showing all the different programs and some of the games that I've put together. Um, so I made a nice little intro collage. I might update it, but uh, give me some feedback. If you like it, throw it down there in the comments section. I, I really appreciate that. Anything that you guys want to throw in there. But moving forward with today's lesson, if you guys remember last time, we created all of our subroutines and our event handlers for our, our controls in the window. So when we run this, we wanted to make sure that we could increment the number of dice we can add a modifier and um, so it could be five, six, whatever number we want, so maybe even 10. And we can say, okay, we're gonna add that to our roll or we're gonna subtract it from our roll. And we also made it so that our controls, our checkbox controls work the way we want them to. We can only add or subtract, we can't do both at the same time. So now today we need to create the function that we're actually gonna use roll for. And so when we click on our button, we want to roll the dice. And so that function that we have, and if we look right here, button, it's going to be our button event handler. So that's going to roll the dice for us. So when we go down to our button event handler, which we have right here, where is it? That's our, oh, so we haven't created that yet. Well, we will. Um, so we did our reset, so we'll, but that's what we're going to be using. We're going to be using our button event handler because that is going to roll the dice for us. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and set that up. And so we're going to do it right below our checkbox reset. Today's lesson might be 20 minutes, but we're going to do quite a bit of work here. All right, so step one, let's create this subroutine. So sub... And this will be our button event handler and we're going to pass a handle and then end sub and then we're going to copy right from our checkbox event handler because we're going to reuse the same code as i've said in all the other lessons if you reuse code or copy and paste code make sure you change anything you need to change it's good practice and then end select. All right, so when we come into this case, we're looking at our button handle. And the case we're looking for is button roll D4. All right, so that means we clicked on our button and we're rolling that four-sided die. So the, one of the first things we're going to go ahead and do, um, looks like I left my Steam open, so a little pop-up notification. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, our D4 total, our total number of dice is equal to zero. Or our total for the roll is equal to zero. Excuse me, not the number of dice. So our total for the roll is zero. We want to make sure that we um, know what our variables are doing for us. So if you guys look back up the, the top, we have D4 count, that's the number of dice, and D4 total is our roll. So we haven't rolled the die yet, so right now it's equal to zero. And so the next thing is we're going to go ahead and we're going to clear the text editor. So if we have any previous rolls, we want to clear those out. So dice roller dot t edit. This is our text editor output window. We're going to use this command exclamation cls. So we're going to clear the screen. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to take the uh, value of our checkboxes and we're going to assign them to a variable. So dr dot 
check box D4 positive and we're going to use value the X uh, the question mark and then we're going to say P result and this is going to be string so is it set or is it reset so we're going to grab that value if we check it it's set if we uncheck it it's reset and so we're going to grab that so that's the positive result and then this is going to be the negative result this will be the same thing value so we have our two variables positive result negative result and then this is where the call to our function is going to be and I'm just going to do a comment here call dice rolling function and currently we don't have the function we have to build it so let's go ahead and right underneath here right underneath this sub this is where we're going to build our function so we're going to say function let's use capital F so function roll dice not total dice roll dice and we're going to pass this function four parameters we're going to pass it the die so if we're rolling <clears throat> excuse me for rolling a four-sided die we're going to pass it what die type we're going to pass it the die count so how many dice and we're going to pass it the positive result and the negative result and these are going to be strings so don't forget that or it won't work right so we're looking at okay you know the die type how many of them and whether positive or negative is checked on our check boxes So those are the parameters we're passing it. And then we're gonna say end function. All right, so with inside of our function, we're gonna have quite a few things. So with this information, we can go ahead and actually call our function. It won't do anything, but we can do our function call. So because we're in the case of button roll D4, we're going to be able to say d4 total equals because our d4 total is what we actually want to grab from our function this is going to be roll dice and we're passing in a four-sided die and we're passing in d4 count so the die type how many and then we're actually just going to be able to pass in the positive result and the negative result so that makes it easy we just pass them in the parameters are the same kind of makes it easy for clarity so that's actually going to get what our role is and then once we have our role I'm just going to do that do that we need to go ahead and assign it to our result text box so this is going to be dr dot tb so text box d4 result and then this is going to be d4 total so that'll print it to our text box so right now if we were to click on this um, we should get zero so let's see if it runs So we get zero. So that's what we're looking for. So now we need to do everything else that um, gets us the actual result that we're looking for. And that's what we're going to go ahead and do here. 
in this function. So, all right. So the first thing we're gonna do inside this function is we're gonna declare an array. And this array is gonna hold how many roles? So dim, uh, let's do capital R, roles, and then die count. So what we're doing is we're, we're giving the number of dice to our rolls. So how many times should I roll it? So one, we just have one thing in our array. Um, if we have two, there's two things in our array. If we have 99, that's 99 dice in our array. So, you know, we're giving it that number. So what the die count is. And then we're gonna use a temp in here. So temp equals zero. And what this temp is for it is actually for our case select. So we're going to do a select case and we're going to look for die. Then end select. And basically, we're going to say case, oops, excuse me, case four. So if die equals four, this case is true. And then we're going to run this code in here and what this is going to allow us to do is actually have two checks so the first check is if our positive result is equal to set then we got a couple of things here so then and oh let's do it like this our text box d4 mod we're going to take the contents out of that and basically we're taking whatever's in that that text box and we're going to assign it to this variable our mod and that stands for roll modifier is what I use that for. And then our temp is going to equal temp plus r mod. And then we're going to go ahead and end if. Now I could do this with like an if else ladder because I have to do just basically a whole nother if statement here. And what's we can copy this for simplicity. Control C. And we're just gonna have to make a few edits to it. Now, one of the edits that we need to do or we need to make is make sure we change the P result to end result, so the negative result. So if that is equal to set, this stays the same, the second line. But instead of adding it to that row modifier, we're going to subtract it. And so that's our case select. And we're going to have other cases for, you know, 6, 8, 10, 12, 20, and 100 sided dice. But that's our, our case for the four sided. So the next thing we're going to go ahead and, and do is we actually need to generate the rolls. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to use a four. So we're going to say four I equals one. So we're going to use a for loop to die count. So how many dice that we have, whatever our die count is, that's how many times we're going to roll. If it's one, we only go one time. If it's 10, we go 10 times. And then we'll say next I here. That way it goes through it. And so now inside of our, our for loop is going to be if I is less than or equal to die count, then roll equals. Now this is um, the function for generating a random number. 
So R and D, and the seed is one. And then we're gonna multiply that times die, so whatever the die type is. So if it's a one-sided, two-sided, whatever it is, or a, because you can do a one-sided die, which is silly, but it like three-sided die, four-sided, six, eight, 10, 12, all those different die types. So we can generate any number that we want. We could create dice that don't even exist. Um, but we're just passing in the four-sided die, and then we're gonna add one, that way we don't get a zero. We don't get a, <clears throat> you know, zero number. So we get the number that we're looking for. So that generates our random roll. And then we're gonna have a temp in here. So temp equals temp plus roll. So if you guys remember our temp, temp number from above, we're gonna add that to our roll. So our modifier. And then we're gonna be able to go in here and say, okay, rolls I. So this is the array. So how many items we have in our array is basically what this is gonna go ahead and do for us. And this is going to equal roll. So now we're gonna store every single one of those in here and then don't forget the end if. So now that should go ahead and populate all of the information that we're looking for. This should do our role. So let's go ahead and save this. And let's go ahead and run it. Let's just try a roll by itself. So that's a zero. So why aren't we running? Let's see. So I missed something somewhere. So let's go back and look. Let's see why. So we are getting zero. I know why. Right here, we have to return the temp. That's my fault. So roll dice, which is the name of our function, equals temp, which is our final roll. That's everything added together. That'll return the value back up to the call to D4 total. So save, run. Survey says, there we go, we're getting random numbers. So two, a four, a three, two. Let's go ahead and roll it twice. Now I got a seven, we roll it three times. Nine, let's bump it up to 10 times. So highest roll could be 40. So 21, 28, 25, 27. Let's add 10 to it, 29, 37, 40. Let's subtract from it, so oh, 10, 14, so that is actually subtracted from. So you can see our rolls are rolling now, uncheck it, back to 31, bring this all the way back down to one. Now we're back to rolling the four-sided die. So that's working exactly the way we want which is perfect. So let's go ahead and just kind of finish up um, some code here. So let's format our, our text for our screen, for our text editor output. And we're gonna do that right underneath here because we're gonna go ahead and push this in information out. So we're gonna to have to format the output for positive, negative, or none for our text editor out. That way it looks nice and clean. And then we're gonna go ahead and print out what die was rolled as well. So the first check is gonna be if p result is equal to set. Whoop. Remember we're looking for a string here. 
then and then this is going to be our text edit out so this is our text editor and then say you have rolled and we're going to use a bracket there and then on the other side of this we're going to go plus we're going to use string we're going to take our die count convert it to a string so we can print it out so die count and then that's going to be plus d so if it's a d4 a d5 you know so 4d what so this is actually going to be plus whatever the die is so it could be 4d4 4d6 5d4 and so we're going to use the string function again convert die to a string that way we can print it out then we're going to add this we have the plus symbol let's do a space space because now we're going to show what modifier we had when we did our roll and we're going to use the string function again and this is where we're going to say our mod and then we're going to add that to our bracket put a space there and then whatever our temp was so string so we're converting all of our um integer variables to string so we can print them out so if it's positive that's how we're going to print it and then we're going to use an if else ladder for this because we're either going to have positive negative or none so we can use an if else ladder um i don't want to do that i want else the only thing i don't like about if else sometimes is it makes it nested or it can make your code look sloppy but i think it works very well here <clears throat> so once again this is going to be set i mean i guess we could use another case here if we wanted to but you know i'm not going to not going to do that we'll do this and so once again we're going to look at our text editor out this is the output for our text editor and then once again you have rolled and so what we can do here is once again let's go ahead and we're going to copy all of this we're going to paste it here And then we need to go through it and say, okay, everything is the same except for right here. Our positive is a negative symbol. That makes it a lot easier. Do a little tweak. And then we're going to have one more else. And then this is the final if and p result equals reset and end result equals reset so if the positive result and i almost forgot the dollar signs here remember these are strings we don't want a data type mismatch so if they both are equal to reset then let's format our data this way so text editor output and then it's going to be similar but it's not going to have as, as much as we have before so you have rolled And basically it's just gonna be plus the string it's gonna be the die count
then it's still going to be plus the D, then plus string the die, which I could have copied and pasted half of what we have up there, but you know, I just figured I'd type it out really quick. And formatting sometimes can, can be one of those things that takes a little bit, bit of time to get used to and to get it the way you want it to look. Um, I've created programs really fast, but I've spent, you know, many hours doing like the formatting. So temp. And so because we have three ifs, we need to go ahead and end all of these ifs. So end if, and if, and then <clears throat> end if. So now that should format the data out for us. I know I'm running a little long. We're probably going to run half an hour this episode, but um, I want to get a lot of this done. Uh, why did we halt? Let's go ahead and look. Why did we halt? Halt, 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 halt. Well, let's, uh, let's debug it. Syntax error. What did I miss? What did I... So let's go back through and see what I missed. Plus string, die count plus. Plus string, die count plus. What did I miss? Ah, right here. You guys see it? I see it. And I missed it in both spots. So I copied and pasted my mistake. I need to add this to the string. Uh, right there so save it and run it now hey look at that we got it back so now for if we roll dice you see we now have some input you have rolled a 1d4 and I rolled a 1 if I click on it again you have rolled a 4 it should update each time so as we go through 3 1 4 now let me go ahead and say okay I'm rolling three four-sided die. Three D4, I rolled a six. I rolled three D4, and now I got a seven. Three D4, and I got a nine. So highest roll I can get is a 12. So now it's telling me what I've rolled. Maybe I'm gonna add five to it. So now if I go ahead and three D4 plus five, I rolled a 12. And a 14. So the plus 5 doesn't go to every roll. It goes to the total of the rolls. Which is nice. Perfect. So that is working the way we want it to. So let's go ahead and just finish formatting really quick. That's the last part. So um, let's print out what rolls were, were rolled. Why don't we give the user quite a bit more information on what they rolled. So we're going to use... Once again, our text editor output window. And then we're just going to say here, rolled. We use a colon. And then don't forget the semicolon here. And then this is where we want to go ahead and we're going to put a loop for i equals one to die count so how many how many die and then we'll say next die that way we just complete the for loop and then here's our here's our output which this is going to be so easy because we've already kind of done this so this just makes it a lot easier so dr so text editor output window and then we're going to use our string function so str and we're basically going to print out our array so rolls i and then let's go over here plus 
And basically, we're just putting a space in between them. So we can see each one of those as we print those out across there. So let's save this. And run it. I already see what I forgot. Jeez, I'm trying to type too fast because I don't want the lesson to be too long for you guys. But all right, so for i equals one to die count, let's go ahead and run this again. And so if we click on roll, roll the four. So let's go ahead and roll five d four. And you can see out of the rolls, we roll a 4, a 2, a 4, a 2, and a 3. So now we're seeing what we actually roll. And we could go ahead and format this even more. We could say, okay, instead of a blank in between them, let's do a comma in between them. So run it again. We'll roll 3. Now we have a comma between one of them. And, and we could go ahead and even change that more by maybe it's a comma and a space after the comma. So we'll run again. Yeah, I like that better. So you can see we, we've just made improvements in the formatting. So now we're generating rolls. And if we go ahead and add five to this roll, you can see 5d4 plus five. So that's an 18. Or maybe we're subtracting it. Now it's a nine. So our first roll in the dice roller is up and running. So what we'll do in the next, in, in lesson six, which may be the final lesson here um, for our dice roller, we'll go ahead and add all the other die types in and we'll connect those. Um, we'll probably do that rather quickly because what we'll do is basically copy and paste it and uh, show you guys how that all looks once we've got it done and formatted. But I really appreciate the time. I don't want to go any longer. But I hope you guys like the video. If you do, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Please don't forget to subscribe. And hopefully you enjoyed the new intro that I added to our, my videos. And leave me any questions, comments in the feedback section. See you guys in the next video.